This material will add a fourth dimension to your 3D prints because you can vary its density by adjusting the extrusion temperature because it foams up. But will it crumble like a dry cookie in its foamed state or is it a viable option for your lightweight designs? Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Audible. A couple of months ago, Colorfab released two really interesting new filaments that are called VarioShore TPU and LW or Lightweight PLA. The cool thing about those materials is that on the roll they look like any regular filament, but during printing you can adjust their density by changing the nozzle temperature. The heat causes the generation of gas within the filament that then foams up with microscopic bubbles. With a TPU you notice that it gets softer when printed at higher temperatures, hence VarioShore TPU. The PLA really nicely foams up and gets that matte surface. If you are hearing foaming now, you might wonder why this is a good thing, because we usually avoid this effect by drying our filaments. In this case though, foaming is used in a more controlled manner that causes the extruded filament to foam up very uniformly with tiny bubbles. This isn't achieved with water like it is with bad filament, but by adding a blowing agent. A blowing agent is a substance that creates gas when heated and is therefore capable of creating a cellular structure in our polymer. This can even be baking soda or some other chemicals that are finely mixed into the material before the filament is extruded. You don't end up with a foamy filament during extrusion because it's extruded under the decomposition point, but the higher temperatures in your nozzle later start the process. This isn't something totally new and quite common in normal industry for making a variety of foam parts. Some agents are even called yoga mat chemicals for being the foaming compounds used in the making of these soft pads. I haven't seen much of this technique being used in 3D printing, but I know that there's at least one other 3D printing filament that has been using a similar method for a while. Polymaker's Polywood doesn't contain real wood like other wood filaments, but also uses foaming to get a similar texture without the danger of clogging or destroying the nozzle. Colorfab are now marketing comparable products for the use in mechanical applications rather than only aesthetic ones. 3D Jake and Colorfab themselves provided a couple of rolls of their foaming materials for me to play around with. I was especially interested in the lightweight PLA and this video will cover the use and the performance of that material. If you are also interested in the VarioShore TPU, let me know in the comments. As I recently have shown again, PLA is still one of the strongest materials, but is quite heavy with a density of around 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. So for lightweight designs, it's sometimes challenging to use it. The 3D printed plane that I did a while ago is really beautiful, but has the problem that it's quite heavy. Even though most of the structures are just single walls, some structures might not need as much strength and stiffness like the hull for example, though you're limited by the diameter of the nozzle. The lightweight PLA claims that it can foam up almost three times its volume, effectively reducing the density to a third. But is the material still mechanically usable in its foamed up state or does the process severely degenerate the performance? In order to find that out, I first tuned in the material for different temperatures and then printed and tested a ton of samples to analyze its performance. And before someone asks, I even annealed the foam parts to see how they fare. In order to tune the parameters, I took guidance from the Colorfab website but also a great blog post that Richard Horn had posted. Links to those resources are in the description and really worth reading. In order to see how the material generally performs, I printed a simple single wall test part on which I first varied the nozzle temperature in 5 degree steps and later in 10 degree steps starting from 200 degrees Celsius to 280 degrees Celsius. All the way up to 210 degrees Celsius, the material looks like regular PLA. At 215 degrees Celsius, you start noticing small bubbles on the surface that seem to get more and more up to 250 degrees Celsius, at which point it looks fully bubbled up. First impression handling it is already really nice, since even the part printed at 280 degrees Celsius still looks very flexible. When the material starts bubbling up, 
You need to reduce the extrusion amount because the volume increases and you would otherwise over extrude. To tune the extrusion amount, I printed sets of more single wall parts where I measured the wall thickness to determine the reduction in the extrusion amount. You need to do that a couple of times because the degree of foaming is not only a function of temperature, but also printing speed, material flow and so on. The difference in density and stiffness can even be heard if you pluck the printed part. In the end, I produced a nice graph that shows that at around 215 degrees Celsius the foaming starts and at around 240 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Celsius you reach the maximum. This is basically the range in which you can play to adjust density. I didn't reach 3 times the volume, but more than 2 was possible, which is a reduction to around 44% the density of regular PLA. With these flow settings I printed a couple of test parts where I already noticed that due to the foaming nature you'll get quite a lot of stringing on your parts if you have travel moves within your part. The material is fairly easy to remove though. You should increase the retraction amount, but if you select it too high you'll clog up your nozzle. For my original Prusa i3 Mark IIIs the maximum was around 2.5mm. Anything more caused problems. This material requires some tuning for your application, but in the end you can get really nice looking, matte parts out of it that are quite a bit lighter than they look. So let's get to the mechanical tests. If you by the way want to take a second look at the result graphs, you can check my website. And if you want to get access to the full test report, consider becoming a patron. Regardless of that, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and have selected the bell to not miss any upcoming videos. I've tested the mechanical properties of Colorfab's lightweight PLA at three different temperatures. 205 degrees Celsius for the unformed material, 225 degrees Celsius which is 67% density and 250 degrees Celsius which results in 44% density. Additionally, since people seem to be interested, I also annealed one set of the 250 degrees parts to see if that changes properties. For each temperature I printed a set of dog bone samples for tensile strength and layer adhesion as well as one of my test hooks for a more realistic loading scenario. Then I printed impact test samples and a bar with which I'll be testing bending stiffness. I checked the weight of the specimens on a scale and verified that the weight is really proportional to the flow rate and it was. Before we start, let me quickly tell you about today's sponsor Audible because they really helped me to make all of this possible. I'm really happy to continue working with them because I use Audible every day while in the car, working or any other situation where I'd like to be entertained or educated. Audible gives you access to an unbeatable selection of audiobooks including bestsellers, mysteries, thrillers, memoirs and more. I'm currently listening to Failure is not an option by Gene Kranz which is a great book about the manned space program from the early Mercury missions through the moon landing with Apollo 11 and the problems that happened during Apollo 13. A great and exciting listen with lots of technical details and great stories about the problem solving they had to do. If you are also into that you can now listen to that audiobook for free by visiting audible.com slash cnc kitchen or if you are in the US by texting cnc kitchen to 500 500. Start your free audible trial today and listen besides your monthly audiobook to two exclusive audible originals that aren't available anywhere else. No risk involved and you can even keep all of your audiobooks forever if you at some point decide to cancel the service. So after you finish watching this video until the end, go and get your free audiobook at audible.com slash cnc kitchen or by texting cnc kitchen to 500 500. Thank you audible for sponsoring this episode. Alright, let's start with the mechanical tests. The samples printed horizontally are simply clamped in my DIY universal test machine and then loaded at a constant speed until they failed. Our baseline part without active foaming failed on average at 49 megapascals, which is a little bit low for PLA, but on the other hand, the material yielded quite a bit before it failed 
and behaved much like tough PLA or PLA+. The foam parts at 225 degrees Celsius were able to bear roughly half of the load and failed on average at 24 megapascals, which is, considering the density of 67%, a little bit low. So the strength and density don't seem to be totally proportional, but I think the values are still pretty good. This is quite a well-known phenomenon of cellular structures and for example described in the Gibson-Ashby scaling law, if you want to do further reading on this topic. The scaling law gives you the relation between density and property and is usually not linear. The degree of unlinearity is dependent on the type of lattice or porosity you have and differs in severity. The parts printed at 250 degrees Celsius were able to bear a quarter of the reference and snapped at only 12 megapascals, but not in a brittle way and they seemed to yield considerably before failure. The layer adhesion samples look a little bit differently for better printability and were also tested on my universal test machine. The parts without foaming snapped at an impressive two-thirds of the strength of the horizontal specimens. The 67% dense parts were able to bear 13 megapascals and the lightest parts failed on average at 4.3 megapascals. It seems that the higher we go with the temperature and the more foam we produce, the more knockdown factor we need to take into consideration with our designs. Due to the flexibility and toughness of the foam parts, I still think it's greatly usable if applied properly. The hook test showed comparable results to the dog bone samples. The hook printed at 205 degrees Celsius snapped at 59 kilograms, the next one at 30 kilograms and the lightest at 17 kilograms. I also put three more hooks into my convection oven at 100 degrees Celsius for an hour to anneal the material. The first thing we notice is that the standing hooks are very deformed because PLA grows quite a bit in z-direction during that process. The lying part was only a little bit smaller and a bit thicker. The tests unfortunately showed again what I also already investigated in the past, that the properties aren't largely altered and the horizontal as well as the vertical hooks failed at very similar load levels than the untreated ones. Before we get to the impact test, let's take a look at the stiffness of the foaming PLA that I tested using a 3-point bending test. This is a property that might be important for you if you are designing your plane for example, so that the wing don't flex too much. The parts are placed in the jig and then loaded successively with weights while the deformation is recorded. The results are quite similar to the strength tests, meaning that the knockdown in stiffness is higher than the decrease in weight. The dense part had a modulus of 3200 megapascals, the 67% dense part a value of 1600 megapascals and the part printed at 250 degrees Celsius only had a modulus of 900 megapascals. With the last one I even wasn't able to add all four weights because when I added the third one the material already started to give slightly. For the last test, I've analyzed the impact strength of the material, so the ability to absorb energy during an impact event. If a material is brittle and shatters, the energy absorption potential is small. If a material yields before breaking, even at these high impact speeds, it's more tough. The specimens are put into a vise and then hit by a hammer. The horizontal specimens again behaved similar to the static tests, though the base impact strength was higher than regular PLA and more like a tough PLA. The standing specimens behave differently because they all were able to absorb quite a similar amount of energy which is great because that means that your part, even at a higher degree of foaming, will be able to take some impact. All in all my tests showed me that the unique property of Colorfab's lightweight PLA seems to be something that could allow really great designs, if you apply it properly. The mechanical properties will suffer with higher degrees of foaming and also even more than the benefit in weight, but still the values seem very reasonable and the parts are stronger than they feel. 
I've printed half of a wing of the Messerschmitt BF109 from 3D Lab Print that turned out great and also gluing was no problem at all. It's of course not as stiff as the wing out of normal PLA, but since the whole plane will be lighter with that material, also loads would be lower. The surface almost feels like canvas with the matte, foamed up material. I didn't finish the whole one yet, but I've seen others flying one printed in lightweight PLA without an issue. The guys from Eclipson even specially designed one of their 3D printed planes for that material and solved the problem of the lower stiffness and strength by adding carbon fiber rods at the critical locations, resulting in a model that is lightweight and easy to print with the design flexibility of 3D printing. Very cool! And if you are interested in RC planes, definitely check them out. You can also, to some degree, dynamically vary the temperature during printing and for example create sandwich structures like this. Changing the temperature within one layer will be tricky due to the thermal capacity of your hot end. But what I'd really like to do is print that material on a multi-nozzle printer and for example print the hull of a wing with lightweight PLA and the internal structures with regular material. But in the end, what do you think about this material? Is it revolutionary and what applications do you see for it? Or do you think it's obsolete? Let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this investigation interesting and learned something new. If you did, then please leave a like and make sure that you're subscribed. If you want to support my work, then take a look at the description and become a patron or a YouTube member. Also, check out the rest of my videos. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. I'll see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye.